Should I repeat? Um, yes. Um, well, it seems the mic was off. So welcome and good morning to the special meeting of the Art and Culture Commission's meeting of May 28, 2015. Roll call, please. Commissioners Lee? Here. Oshagan? Present. Chirikian? Yes. Chairperson Derhovanesian? Present. For the record, Commissioner Deaver is not present. The agenda for the May 28th special meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on May 22nd, 2015. Next item. Item two, consent items. At 2A, approval, approval of meeting minutes from March 19th, 2015. Any comments? Any corrections? I make a motion to approve. I second it. Thanks. Next. Commissioners Lee? Yes. Oshagan? Yes. Sharikian? <coughs> yes. Chairperson Derhovanesian? Yes. At, at 2B, approval of meeting minutes from April 29th, 2015. I'll, um, I'll make a motion to approve the meetings. Okay. I second. Minutes. Okay. Thank I second you. the motion. Commissioners Lee? Yes. Oshagan? Yes. Sharikian? Yes. Chairperson Derhovanesian? Yes. Next slide. Um, at 3, introductions and presentations. At 3A, Brand Library and Art Center, GTV6 video presentation. Uh, Chair Derhovanesian, commissioners and city staff, uh, we have a really, really fine presentation about the Brand Library and Art Center. Uh, it focuses a little bit on the staff and what uh, kind of people walking up these steps are going to get when they enter that building, what sort of services. Uh, this was put together by GTV6 here at the city, uh, and we can just roll that. Glendale's Brand Library is one of the treasures that we have in our community. We offer a collection of resources that is very unique, particularly for a public library. We have a huge variety of people and everybody is welcome. We have an art and music library that's one of the best on the West Coast. We have subject specialist librarians. They're specifically trained to help people with art and music related questions. I'm the music librarian here at the Brand Library and Art Center. I have a background in music and also a master's degree in library science. He can help you find scores. He can help you figure out what's in copyright and what's not in copyright. We have 33,000 CDs. We order sometimes from museums in France. And we serve a big variety of patrons. I had someone yesterday who was going through Ken Burns' jazz history um, DVDs, and I was recommending supplemental CDs for him to listen to while he was learning about the whole history of jazz in the United States. We also have an LP collection. People always ask about that. Yes, we have 6,000 LPs. Hi, I'm Kaylee Cannon. I'm the art librarian at the Brand Library and Art Center. Um, as the art specialist here, it's my job to work with anyone from the creative industries and to assist them with their research. The Brand Library has over 65,000 books, everything from fashion, painting, to sculpture, to how to make art. Earlier this week, um, I worked with someone from one of the local studios and she wanted examples of automobiles from the 1920s for a show that she's working on. And so I helped her do that kind of research using the library's online resources and then also directed her to some of our books. Kaylee comes from a background in academic libraries. We have an extensive collection of exhibition catalogs, um, particularly focusing on California artists. We have huge um, streaming databases that patrons can use. Jazz, classical, American, pop. And you can listen to those streaming from home, just logging in with your library card for free. We also have access to articles and also a great image database that has over two million images from museums all over the world. One of the important online resources that uh, we offer here at Brand is Art Store Digital Database. And it's a database of high resolution digital images that are contributed by museums and universities and galleries around the world. And because they are high resolution, users can actually zoom in, see the weave of the canvas. 
Brand Library was opened in 1956, uh, so we've been here a long time. In 1969, we added an addition, which gave us additional shelf space. It gave us the gallery and our recital hall where we do concerts. We have a 110 seat recital hall with a Steinway piano, but we also sponsor concerts in there. Last weekend we had a concert by, of music of Comidas that had a full house. Um, we have our own chamber music series. This summer we will have an outdoor concert series on Friday nights on the plaza, so please join us for that as well. We do have a, a very large professional art gallery that's been in business since 1969 when the building opened. We do about eight exhibitions a year. It's typically contemporary art by artists from the region. Brand Library is located in such an arts and culturally active region. The Brand Library is an important resource for um, local artists because we do serve a wide variety of industry professionals, whether it's fine artists, the galleries, the museums, the studios. Everyone has access to the library. All you have to have is a California State ID or a driver's license. Please come and visit us. Well done, that's well done. such a great presentation. Thank you. Very nice. <coughs> Next. At 3B, Student Film Showcase, presented by Stephen Jerome, Brand Associates. <coughs> well, thank you for giving me the time here. Uh, let me introduce myself as Stephen Jerome. I'm. Uh, I come as a uh, member of the Board of Associates of Brand, but my connection with Glendale goes back to, well, my earliest days, actually. I started, uh, when my family came from New Zealand, uh, I started school at R.D. White. I went to Wilson. I graduated from Glendale High School. And uh, in at high school, as I discovered that I was art very artistically inclined, I um, discovered Brand Library. And really, I can say that the brand was instrumental in my early training as an artist. And it never really ceased. Uh, about 25 years ago, I even gave a, a piano recital of my own music because I'm a composer as well as a novelist and a photographer, professional photographer. Don't try that at home, <laughs> juggling three talents as a life's work is, uh, has been a, a life's work. But anyway, uh, so when last uh, year I was at an opening and I was invited to be on the board, I thought, well, this seems like a logical coming full circle for me. So I said yes, not really knowing what it was entailing, but after I was um, in, uh, formally invited onto the board, I thought, well, now how do I make myself useful? Uh, I thought, well, all of the schools must have uh, pretty uh, current media programs going on. I wonder if they've all brought themselves together to have a, um, a film, uh, like a film festival, basically. And although it had been mulled over, apparently, over the years, nobody had actually uh, come along and d did it, so I've done it. And Tonight is the night of the first uh, opening of, uh, of that uh, event, which I hope will be, I'm calling it a first annual, as I've been involved with, uh, I was on, for instance, I was on the, um, my uh, 40th and 45th high school reunion uh, committee to plan events for that. So 40 years after I graduated from high school, I'm still, you know, seem to have a finger in the pie of this community. I'm hoping that this film event will last way outlast me so that in 40 years they're still coming and having gathering and like minds from all of the far-flung schools of Glendale and showing the work and my goodness how it's going to evolve with the technology and, and the quality is going to get better and better. This year it's a, a pilot program and I'm really glad that it is because it's given me a chance to uh, um, learn the uh, bureaucratic ropes, which is not my, uh, you know, natural inclination, but I've met nothing but great people, one of whom is your chairperson, but all my fellow board members at the brand, they're, they're all ladies, I'm the only guy, but they're just terrific, and I've met other people in other departments, 
including the mayor and the city, uh, uh, city manager and others. And everybody's been just super and super supportive of this program because even as uh, the superintendent, uh, Glendale Unified School District superintendent said, it's kind of a no-brainer that these kids should finally have a place to show the work that they're doing every year. But not just that, that, that all the schools can mingle, the students can mingle, bring the like minds together and become not just five different high schools, but a, co a community of creative people. And I think that's a really the, that's the long-term goal. And you know we're touching on that this year. Next year, it'll be all five schools, according to the superintendent. So that's uh, a big job, which I'm doing totally pro bono here. I've got a, a, a life outside of all of this. Uh, but I feel like it's, for me, uh, as a kind of nurturing guy, it seems uh, a logical uh, thing for me to be involved in. And I'm really pleased because everybody has been, as far as I, my encounters with everybody, one of the great things is no drama. So everybody's been sensible and everybody's been considered and considerate of me as a novice in this game and really supporting the whole program. So I think that sort of says, oh, no, one more thing, may I? <laughs> <coughs> this will be handed out. This is the video that includes all of the films that will be shown tonight. And I have one for each of you. And all of the students will get it. These will go, according to uh, Cindy Cleary, into all the libraries and begin what I hope will be a long-term archive of collected works of the students of uh, Glendale. So Glendale High Schools, plural. So I'm uh, pleased and honored to hand these out. So I if, take one and pass it on, like I say in church. <clears throat> and I assume you are inviting us tonight. And needless to say, I mean, I, I, of course, you're all invited. My goodness. I, I, in fact, I really don't know what the turnout's going to be at all. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I've not done this before, so I don't know what success means except a full house. But as this is only involving one school and one film from another school, Clark, I don't know what the, the turnout's going to be, but I don't think that's the point this year. It's about just initiating, getting the machinery going, introducing me to you, so when I come back another time, you're going to know that, oh, the, he's the guy who did that and, and who's really in favor of uh, promoting the, I really, I, I genuinely promoting the, the development of the young kids, because I was a, I, I walked through Glendale High School last week, and I, you know, I was the first graduating class in 1969 from that plant as it, as we know it today, and none of these kids, you know, they just look at me as some, I don't know what they thought, but anyway, would you uh, please tell us where and the time, the location of tonight's event? Uh, it's a brand library uh, from seven to nine. Okay. Uh, there'll be uh, there'll be a, a DJ and there'll be pizza afterwards. So you know, come for the free food. And uh, and uh, uh, the uh, city uh, um, actually, Sebastian Puccio of uh, has uh, said that he'd uh, make a place in his calendar, as he put it, to come tonight and uh, others. So I think it'll be. Uh, as far as we can be at this early pilot stage, I think it'll be quite successful. I'm really pleased, and I'm, I'm particularly pleased with how everybody has come together to make it happen and support me as, like, the new guy, except I'm not the new guy. I've been around in Glendale for a long, long Thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Jerome. Thank you very much. Um, this is fantastic. I want to commend your efforts. In this day and time that we have all these uh, uh, YouTube films that youngsters prepare and et cetera, you are giving them a direction and you are giving them a focus which would be in the right direction. And uh, city and uh, district is really supporting this, so we are welcoming this great effort of yours and hopefully this would continue for many years. Thank you very much for the presentation and the invitation. Thanks. Thank you all for your support. It's, it's really heartfelt appreciation. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. At 3C, Live 100, presented by Kathy Billings, Brown Library and Arts Center.
Hi, I'm Kathy Billings. I'm the supervisor at the Brand Library and Arts Center. I want to thank you for having me here today to report on the Landmark Life 100 exhibition, which took place at the Brand Library Art Galleries um, in commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. The exhibition was conceived, planned, and curated by a committee that worked tire tirelessly for over a year to put together an incredible exhibition that included the works of master Armenian artists and contemporary artists as well. Many private collectors and galleries lent works to the show, and we thank them, of course, for their generosity. Many of these paintings hadn't been seen publicly in decades, probably. Um, I would like to acknowledge the members of the Life 100 Committee who were such a pleasure for us to work with. They worked so hard and were so professional. Um, I'd just like to name them quickly. Lena Akian, Arda Barbarian, Sarah Balarian, Ida Navas, Navas Agarian, Tamar Sananian Naman, Caroline Tufenkian, and Harry Voparian. I would also like to thank and acknowledge all of the Arts and Culture Commissioners who supported us throughout and visited the exhibition, encouraged others to visit the exhibition, and attended so many of the events. So thank you to all of you for your support throughout. We sponsored six different programs um, associated with the exhibition, all of which were very well attended and attended not just by Glendalians, but from people all over the Los Angeles area, which really was um, a testament to the Brand Library and Arts Center and to Glendale and what we did there. The first event that we sponsored was the opening reception, of course, and that was attended by at least 500 people, if not more. <laughs> that was an afternoon of, of excitement and uh, a lot of people really seeing the show and enjoying it immensely. The opening, sorry, we started off with the program of documentary and short films that was organi organized by the University of Southern California, California's Institute of Armenian Studies. The films address the complex relations between Armenians and Turks in the century after the genocide. So that was a program that really generated a lot of conversation and thought. We had two concerts, one sponsored by the Brand Associates, which featured new compositions by Armenian composers, and one sponsored by the Life 100 Planning Committee that featured classics by the Armenian composer Komitas. We also hosted a symposium, which was planned by the Carl Wilkins Fellow, Tigrana Zakarian. That featured speakers from the Armenian, Jewish, Cambodian, Bosnian, and Rwandan communities. And again, that was an opportunity for dialogue and discussion beyond just the Armenian genocide. So we were thrilled to be able to host that at Brand. The Life 100 Committee also planned a panel discussion that featured many of the people that participated and contributed to the exhibition catalog. That included um, the art critic Peter Frank, who's well known here in Los Angeles and elsewhere, the gallerist Jack Rupberg, the artist Joanne Julian, and the art histor historian Neri Melkonian. We also, and I don't know if people knew this, we had 19 uh, school groups come to see the exhibition. Um, they came from both private schools and the Glendale Unified School District. And that was just a treat for all of us to interact with these kids anywhere from five to high school age and really engage them with the artwork and see their excitement and their curiosity. So that was really a special treat for us to have young people come to see the show. Um, the exhibition itself and the related programs, like I said, opened a lot of dialogue and encouraged reflection on important themes, um, which in our opinion is really a mark of success for the exhibition. Speaking on behalf of the Glendale Library Arts and Culture Department and the Brand Library and City staff that worked so hard to make this exhibition a success, I would just like to say how proud we are to have been a part of this landmark exhibition. Thank you. Yes, could I? First of all, congratulations on the previous video. I think it was a really, really nice video presentation of the, the library and the, and the gallery. Thank you. Um, the Haunted Life exhibit was, I think, was a tremendous exhibit. I was very fortunate to be part of it myself. Uh, the fact that it wasn't just concentrated on just the Armenians, for instance, I think was, was the key to its success, like you said. It brought in art critics, historians, gallerists, um, Rwandans and Bosnians and all, all kinds of cross-section uh, of different groups that, that live together and perhaps don't, sh we share the same space that we live in in Glendale and Greater Los Angeles, but 
we don't get the chance to really rub shoulders, as they say. So this was a chance to do that, and I think that's the mark of its success. And I think, you know, um, that kind of open-minded, wide horizon, wide horizon sort of approach to exhibition and programming, and the programs were very well attended, uh, is really excellent direction, and I commend you. Thank you. Well, I would like to add and thank you, you and the city, and Cindy Cleary especially with you. You were there 24-7. I visited most of the events to keep the place in ship shape, clean, and well attended, and the way you welcomed everyone, and the place without hosting it properly in such a magnificent location. I don't think that all the beautiful work that the Life 100, uh, 100 committee put together would have had its glory. You guys did a fantastic job. Uh, I want community to understand that the collaboration of city and community is such a major event and how much effort is put by our staff to make things happen for the community. It was a landmark event and you made it to get to its highest. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Next. At 3D Library Arts and Culture events presented by Chuck Weick, Community Relations Manager. We have a number of uh, great events coming up in June, uh, but certainly not the least of which is our annual summer reading program. Technically, it starts today. We had a kickoff party early this morning in our children's room, uh, but it's not just for kids, uh, it's for all ages. We have a concurrent teen reading program and also an adult uh, reading program. So everybody's invited to keep reading over the summer. Uh, one interesting uh, uh, partnership we have this year with Glendale Unified School District is that they're gonna provide free lunches Monday through Friday at the Central Library to any kids 18 and younger. It's a really, really unique uh, little situation. First time we've ever been able to do that. Uh, so you can read a book and your kids can come outside and get something to eat. Nice, healthy lunches. Uh, Threadbare uh, is the current exhibition at the Brand Library. It, it started May 16th, it runs through uh, July 18th. The opening reception will be next Saturday, June 6th at 7 p.m. And there will also be an Artists in Conversation on June 18th, which is a Thursday. Uh, this, this exhibition features artists who weave two-dimensional mixed media and sculpture and a number of site-specific installations. It's curated by Yoram Gill. And the artists uh, in this exhibition are Nurit Avasar, Elena Kundal, Susan Kurland, Janet Neuwalder, Sigrid Orlet, and Peggy Pownall. Uh, and of course, you heard about the, the real art film series uh, up, at, up at the Brand Library. That's tonight at 7 p.m., uh, Hoover High School Filmmaker Showcase. Uh, that's going to be a, a great uh, program. We're very fortunate to uh, have that program, but now we've also got the videos. So uh, we'll be able to keep this thing running for a while. Um, Heidi Duckler. This is like a big brand uh, a presentation today. The Heidi Duckler Dance Theater will be at the Brand Library on Saturday, June 13th, twice at noon and 3 p.m. Um, that particular program um, is called Brush Up. It's a dance theater piece created in collaboration with a Tokyo-based calligraphy artist. Um, his name is, <coughs> yeah, well, the name is Isa Hirano. <coughs> a captivating performer whose work blends traditional Japanese calligraphy with performance art. Saturday, June 13th, twice, uh, noon and three, and then at four o'clock there's a reception, so you get to eat a little bit afterwards, meet the uh, dancers. Um, and then something I, I imagine near and dear to your hearts is the Brand Library Plaza series. Um, again, uh, this is the second year uh, this will run from June 5th through the end of August, every Friday night outside on the Brand Library Plaza. Uh, the first up will be the Tikiaki Orchestra on June 5th. 
Um, we have the City of Angels saxophone quartet the following week. We've got this Neptune Cocktail is a surf rock band, so if you like Wipeout, this is the band for you. Uh, we have a singer-songwriter, Wendy Sue Hunt, at the end of June. And I'll, I'll keep going just a little bit so you can see what's going on before our next meeting. Uh, the Wyman Project, I think that's, that's going to be really interesting. Uh, this is uh, four string players and a rhythm section. They do a very eclectic uh, uh, arrangements and original music written by a composer named Ryan Wyman. Uh, but they blend classical jazz, pop rock, and film music. Uh, Cloud Walkers, uh, great looking guys, four singers, pop, jazz, um, contemporary sounding. Uh, uh, Sangar Tohunga, that's a local gamelan group. They're actually out in Tohunga. They have a, a, a gamelan studio. Uh, it's, it's an Indonesian, uh, Balinese uh, gamelan. Those are those, those uh, metal uh, pieces right in front there. And July 24th, Zet's Klezmer Ensemble. Now they say that they take Klezmer even farther out than Klezmer usually goes. Um, Zets in Yiddish uh, means to jab or poke. So they're they're a they're going to charm you with their their energy and their uh, fun take on klezmer music. Uh, and at the end of June, this should be after our our July meeting, we have a local singer, Judy Walker. She is renowned. She she plays and travels all across the United States. Uh, she has a very fine quartet, and she will be singing jazz standards. Uh, and that's the end of June, July. Uh, there are, of course, four more performances in August that I'm not going to get to until next month. But you can tell uh, they are all over the place. They're remarkable uh, musicians. I think the community is going to have a lot of fun these summer nights. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, I think we also talked about uh, reconfiguring the setup Mm -hmm. Can you please give us some mm -hmm. details? Sure. The uh, last year, the performances were kind of near the entrance. Um, uh, good in, in many ways, the first, first year, but uh, it was harder for people down the plaza to see up uh, at the musicians, at the performers. Uh, and if there were people dancing, there often were. If they were dancing in the audience, you couldn't see past them. Um, so this year, We've turned it around so the performers will be at the lowest end of the plaza. The seating will be above. You can still get in and, and around very easily, uh, but the performers will be down below. We've got some electricity, and yeah, we've got electricity up there. Uh, and uh, if you want to dance, you can dance in the back. The gallery will, of course, be open so you can, you can uh, venture in there and see, see what's going on. The restrooms are up there and so forth. Uh, but we're going to try this out. Uh, we may or may not put risers. Um, we'll try it out uh, in June without the risers. If that works, we, we may not need to, to put those groups on risers. But I, I, I'm hoping that little tweak will, will uh, serve the audience a little better. Uh, just I wanted to add that this is a fantastic program and we are so glad that we have our brand uh, staff including Kathy Billings and Blair and you who um, you know with Mr. Blair he's a musician himself he's very good in kind of selecting what would be working best and thanks for accommodating and changing the direction uh, that we are going to have the performers where we used to have the audience. And one thing that I want to mention also is that this is a major presentation that Art and Culture Commission takes upon itself in collaboration with the brand associates. Of course, I think we do most of the uh, days and they have some of the days. I don't know exactly the number, but that's not the most important. That is one of the big efforts of the Arts and Culture Commission to bring music also to the community, because sometimes that is forgotten. People don't know how much is being done by different um, programs or commissions in the city. So that's a great work, and thank you for the nice presentation. At three, a Glendale picnic, GTV6 presentation.
Ah, this uh, Glendale picnic is is the arts and culture um, installation uh, in Central Park. <laughs> Sorry, there you go. Uh, and you were there for the opening, so uh, GTV6 did some interviews with the artists and the uh, curator. After Productions uh, is proud to be part of a program called You Are Here. It's a temporary art installation program. We'll be doing a series of installations throughout the coming year, 2015, in and around Glendale in certain iconic spots. Today, I'm sitting on a Glendale picnic by artist Bridget Beck. This great opportunity arose um, a call for artists from After Productions and I submitted this sculpture, which is called a Glendale Picnic. And what it is, it's a place for anybody in the area to come and hang out, relax. Um, we're right across from the Adult Rec Center and Kitty Corner to the library. So I hope that people will be able to come out here and read books, you know, um, maybe do some fitness at the Adult Rec Center and then come out and uh, relax on the sculpture. We really pride ourselves on spotlighting artists and creating opportunity to show work, create work, create conversation about art, and really make it a part of the community. I worked about two and a half months on this sculpture. I built it all by hand, and I built it so that it would come apart in different pieces that we then transported here. Underneath the ground, there's a huge structure that everything kind of comes from, so everything is very stable and sort of spread out in this area. One of the great things about this particular location in Glendale is we have these beautiful trees in, um, above the sculpture, so that there's a lot of uh, shade when you're having a picnic. And also, if you look above at the, the uh, satellite dish of the sculpture, there's birdhouses um, kind of peppered throughout, and those are sort of protected uh, up in the tree. So I'm crossing my fingers that there'll be some birds that inhabit those houses soon. Glendale is really committed to championing the arts and enhancing um, what that means in our city so that people start finding art in and around every facet where they live and breathe and walk. And that is our goal to be a part of that. But what I wanted it was just for uh, a sculpture to be a place where people don't have to worry about touching it, that they could actually be a part of it. This sculpture really isn't finished until people are actually on the sculpture itself. And what I like to tell people is my sculptures are kind of lonely until that somebody comes to visit them. So I think of the community as a material and I'm really excited for Glendale to become a part of this sculpture, a Glendale picnic. Well, on that also, I should say that, you know, to put a picnic area for young kids and for the adult center, what a great idea to combine these two generations in one place. It's a beautiful work, and it's also one of the projects of the Art and Culture Commission that is being taken care of by Ms. Foyer. Uh, that is an excellent uh, sample, beautiful presentation, and they had a phenomenal opening ceremony, which we, some of us were present there. Any, any questions, any comments? Uh, yes. I should add that uh, the day they filmed this, a group of 20 plus students in the environmental design um, studies at, from Daly High School visited the site and talked to Bridget about her use of recycled materials. So they weren't just art students, it was a kind of an environmental class. Great idea. I have a question. Sure. So what has been the, the attendance or the response? Have a lot of people been going and sitting on it and not making the sculpture feel lonely? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to go out and uh, yeah, you uh, go out at lunchtime and, and take a look. And so has, how about response from the community to the library? Has anybody said anything? Uh, people have mentioned that it's out there. Yeah. Uh, so quite what is that thing? It, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little... It's a little uh, uh, confusing to people sometimes, but it's it's whimsical, so it's it's not exactly playground um, equipment. It's fun, right? Yeah, well, that's what I really like about it. It is whimsical and it's sort of contemporary, and you don't know what to make of it until you interact with it. So I think that's really <laughs> plus. 
One thing I can mention is that the adults from the adult center do visit that area very often to check and see how well it is being attended. So that part, I think, is taken care of by the um, people who are frequenting our adult center, which is a phenomenal f f center also. So next. I have a question. Uh, yes, regarding. go ahead. Um, is there a plaque or a note or something that mentions this is commission, art and culture commission, or whatever the project is about? Yeah, I'll, I can bring a picture sometime of the show. They were very careful to brand that with the uh, Arts and Culture okay. Commission um, uh, information, so it's very specific uh, to the city of Glendale okay. and the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next. At 3F, I witnessed a public art installation at Grand Park presented by Ara Oshigan, Arts and Culture Commissioner. Um, yeah, so I need to hook in or? <laughs> well, I think everybody in the community was talking about this special event. Many people attended. I had a lot of selfies and different uh, pictures sent to me of that event of community people visiting. Uh, and we are so proud that our commissioner, Ara Oshagan, was the person and his friend that they have created these phenomenal sculptures. It is, it is whimsical, yet it has, uh, it carries all the heritage, it carries uh, and presents in a very visual and spectacular way. Mr. Oshagan, are you ready? Commissioner Oshagan. Um, okay, if you could just bear with me. You know, we ran in the middle right now of the installation itself, it's still not done yet, and so when there's still, two huge events this weekend and Sunday is the last day and so we're still in the midst so we don't have anything finished like the GTV presentations of the Glendale picnic or anything like that but I can definitely show you some things that we were uh, able to get a like a drone little drone video uh, of the installation I can start with that and I can go to our website and show you some things from the website real quick can you talk about the location as well yeah so it's a um, it's in downtown Los Angeles, so it's on three different levels, uh, starting from the Music Center Plaza. So the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, between the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion and the Mark Taper Forum, it starts there, or there's no starter end, but one level is there, right there. We have some sculptures there, and you'll see them. And then as you come down from the Music Center, you cross Grand Street, and then Grand Park begins, which is a new park in downtown Los Angeles, started in, in open 2013. Then there's a big fountain and terrace area where we have sculptures. We call them photographic sculptures. And then, and then there's another lower level. Um, and it's called Eyewitness, and it is um, genocide survivors that a project that Levon Parian, my friend, photographer, and my friend, we've done for no, nearly 20 years where we photographed Armenian genocide survivors um, and uh, recorded their oral histories. So we've combined, we've done uh, exhibits on, on, double, on, on walls and things in the past, but this one is a three-dimensional installation that you'll see now, and we had to work with uh, architects, builders, and things. It was, it was very, very big and involved uh, project. Just a quick uh, background, and I can show you this quick. One level. This is the top level. This is the lower level. Here you can see the music center and Grand Park. So we have 24 different sculptures. Um, and they're designed to sort of create this immersive space where you walk into that space um, and you are completely surrounded by the by their gazes by their images um, and and there's a so here we are uh, we're putting up one of the sculptures um, it's, it's got a steel frame underneath it, and then we wrap it with, with the actual images, um, portraits of the genocide survivors. And 
And um, here's an image from the, from the opening day. So this is on the lower level. As you can see, it's, you can walk through, walk past. Um, and here's the map of what it, on three different levels downtown. So on the left here is, uh, this here is the music center. We have full sculptures here. And then you walk down and then this is the rest of the, this is sort of the dense area where you really get sort of this immersive feeling in that space. And then down here, actually this map is a little different than what, what it is now. And, and you get this sort of extensive thing that you can walk through and past. The view from down below, and you can re you recognize the music center uh, beyond. Let's see, out oh, so. As they say, a picture a thousand words. I yeah, suppose they see. they they really express a lot and kind of they were immortalized. And they are the people that are within our community. Their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren live in this community. So that was a very interesting project to put together. Thank yeah, you, so, Mr. And we've had, right, so we've had some, uh, some coverage from the LA Times and the AP uh, Curb the LA. And we just had a concert down there last week where we had over 1,500 people show up for the concert. And this is another image from uh, from the installation. As I said, this weekend, we have a very special thing we're doing. We've invited, so there are almost, there are 45 survivors in the installation. I'm in touch with almost 25, 30 of them, or the families of, of the survivors of the, in the installation. So we've invited them down to come, and uh, we're going to do a big photo shoot with families of the survivors standing next to the images of the survivors, and then we're going to put all the families together and take one huge image, and I expect it's going to be this. 150 people plus photo, uh, which are the, the descendants of these people who went through this tremendous, horrible atrocity, and they lived, and their response to genocide is, you know, we, we, st we are here, and we will procreate, we will have new generations. That's sort of the idea. And at and Saturday night, also, we're having a uh, performance piece where um, testimony will be read in front of the sculptures by different actors. So we invite everybody down to come down to, to Grand Park Saturday all day and in the evening performance at 7 o'clock. Um, and if there are any questions, I'll be very happy to. I would like to I, add My friend Hirad has, has been instrumental in helping us get this thing together also. Um, this is just beyond a, a exhibition. <laughs> what it is, how can you present a sad moment in a people's life? a genocide in an art way. Uh, Ara and Levon Parian, the artists of those uh, magnificent pictures and photographs, mm -hmm. they were able to capture that moment. And it's so friendly that a kid, five years old, six years old, can go and enjoy walking around. But at the same time, it's so touchy. So it has so strong feeling when an elderly people walk around and we see them cry. And we had moments where people put some flowers in front of their grandfather's pictures. It's so touchy. And, and this is, of course, a combination of art and history. Uh, and that's the technique where Ara and Levon put it together. And of course, we were able to help with a few guys. And it's very sensitive. Thank you very much, Ara. Well, I need to add that community did welcome very well, and they financially supported this project also. That shows that a lot of people do care, because it was a very expensive project from what I heard, and it was taken care of by the community to make sure that this happens. And um, uh, we had city officials uh, that they kind of allocated the area. They gave us the opportunity to have that presentation which was a major also collaborative effort. It shows how we are all together, how we stick together, how we do appreciate each other's culture and history. That was a great thing for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oshaka. May I add one other yes, thing, sure. one small thing, great thing. Um, in the, the upper level where the music center is, there are almost daily uh, buses that come with tourists around 
from everywhere, from Italy, Spain, China. You're amazed how many people shows up. And those people, they were taking pictures of those installations. And when we were around, we would talk to them and you know, explain them. But we are searching also their uh, Facebook accounts, so we see them uh, posting their, those pictures on their pages, and it's becoming not just in LA or California or US, it's become internationally right now. Yes, it's, that's a very interesting point that we learned about it too. You know, and something very special about this event was that they were put on gigantic pyramids and uh, shapes that were not really geometrical, which had in its own self an explanation. First of all, they were not kind of belittled. They were enlarged, and kind of a moment in history is being enlarged by the survivors. And, and uh, to have these shapes, I think it was very new. I don't know, I've not seen anywhere else that such a dire, such a serious topic would be put on a huge, uh, ginormous uh, geometric shape. Uh, that was something very novel. Everybody was talking about that as well. So uh, that, that is a very artistic, that's very creative of the artists, Arav Shagat and Devon Aravartarian, who has, have come with that idea. So that's, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, well, if I could just add to that, okay, so the, the basic idea behind that is that, uh, first of all, the shapes are sort of, there's no, not a single 90 degree angle in any of these shapes, so it all seems totally, it seems unbalanced. When you walk through it, it seems that perhaps they're going to fall on top of you, almost. <laughs> um, and so that idea speaks to a world being out of balance, where there's war, there's genocide, there's atrocity. So that, that idea is that these people have seen such things, and they're here to tell us that there's something wrong and there's something off. And when you walk through that space, you feel that, and you feel their eyes telling you that something is not right, something needs to be changed. Uh, plus, the angles are, are sharp oftentimes, and that speaks to their disruption in their own life and their community. So genocide or atrocity or war is a huge disruption in people's lives and communities' lives. So that, that, that connects with their, the disruption in their lives. Some of them actually had multiple disruptions in their lives where they, they fled genocide, then they had to flee war, and they had to flee the economic disaster. So it's a continuing thing, and it's all connected back to where we are now, where a lot of us have come from disrupted communities, disrupted countries. Um, this country is made of the source is, is economic disruption, immigrants coming to make this country itself. So this connects to the whole history of the United States. Um, and I'd like to thank, so the person who made this happen is, is Michael Antonovich, the LA County uh, supervisor and mayor. And so um, he provided us the space to do it in. And so he was, so it took a, it took a county, it took a city, it took many, many large resources to make it happen. So we're very appreciative of that. Well, we need to thank Mr. Antonovich as well, that he has done such a great job. Yes. He's a great man, and, and that was a great presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Shagan. Let's now get thank you. With our rest of the uh, items on the agenda. We have a very serious topic to discuss. Uh, so let's go with the next. Item four, oral communications. We have none, so we'll go to the next item. <coughs> item five, business agenda. At 5A, action item. At one, motion providing direction on an open studio tour program. Uh, Chair Derhovanessian, commissioners, city staff. Uh, uh, it is recommended that the commission provide direction to staff regarding the continuation of an open studio tour program. In 2010, the Arts and Culture Commission sponsored the sixth and last uh, open studio tour in Glendale. Uh, it was a self-guided one-day tour uh, where artists and arts organizations showcased a variety of styles and techniques. Uh, the event encouraged artists to interact with one another while at the same time increasing awareness of Glendale as an active artist community. It was quite successful. There were 186 participating artists and organizations. The tour included 38 locations with two beeline routes to transport people to each site. And additionally, 145 artists exhibited their works at the Brand Library Art Galleries, with over 500 people attending the opening reception. 
The budget for that last event was $5,000 with an additional 500 hours of staff support. In the summary of a report to the commission, it was recommended that planning for uh, an open studio tour or OST start at least six months prior to any event. Uh, at the April 29th, 2015 special meeting, the commissioners discussed the possibility of continuing the tradition of the OST. And if the commission chooses to move forward, it is recommended that in light of limited staff resources, that a coordinating consultant be engaged to manage this event. It is also recommended that the event be approved within the 2013-15 work plan so that the planning process can be initiated uh, soon. Uh, there is uh, right now $45,000 available that was budgeted but not expended for the murals on the city property program. Okay. Um, I would like to open this for discussion, but before that, I would like to say that Open Studio Tours was a major, major uh, chance for all the artists in the community. It was very well attended. And imagine 186 artists had a chance, a lifetime chance, to have one of their work presented at the Brand Library's exhibit hall. This is not an opportunity that is easily given to the community artists, and that was provided. So it was a major event. Now I would like to open and see how we want to take care of this, what is the volition and the will of the commissioners on that topic. Anybody would like to start first? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm very excited that uh, we're, we're com hopefully coming to uh, form this back again. Good. So um, first of all, I would like to see if everybody does uh, believe in the fact that we need to have the open studio tour, so we would recommend it to the council. So we will proceed with the rest of the details. Any comments, any ideas? I personally don't have any objection of the event. I mean, it looks like or sounds like it's something community uh, event, and uh, we might have more than 200 artists this time around. Uh, I don't know if it's feasible to do it in one day. That's another issue we need to probably discuss it down the line. But uh, initially, I, I don't see anything not to oppose it. So let me see if I understood. You You think you're okay with it, but you would like to see it in more than one day spread. Any Possibly. other comments on that, on that detail? What was, can I, on that detail? Yeah, on, on any of the, the What was the ideas. proposed budget then for this? Or what, would it, what is it gonna cost? There is no proposed budget at this time. I mean, it not, costs $5,000. Estimated, okay, ago. estimated budget is, what uh, do you think would be? I, I called a number of cities and a county to find out and, and because of what those groups do, say they have a, uh, a catalog, you know, anything printed, there's design and printing. And that ranged, you know, in up to say $10,000 to print a lot of catalogs and to get the design work, you know. Uh, if you look online, the websites are really cool looking. Uh, Venice has two different Ones, there's an art walk and an art block, great looking, but interestingly, you know, they're not opposed, but they, 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 they sort kind of, of split. Like, yeah, well, right? Some of them broke off from yeah, the they broke off. tour and they're um, doing their own thing. Yeah. So there are, there are some issues uh, that they had. Um, another, uh, Placer County of all, all places, I talked to somebody who's actually at San Luis Obispo, uh, but Placer County has had a, a rather large open studio tour for 22 years. They fund it by charging the artists. Uh, they had 75 artists at $175 a piece entry fee. Um, that's uh, a little over $13,000 uh, raised there, but then they're spending um, 6,000 in design, five to $7,000 for a print magazine and a color map and staffing, uh, and I, it, it seemed like they were lowballing the staff. There was only $3,000 for a coordinator. Um, uh, the Venice people, they work all year. They're volunteers. They work all year for a one-day event. And granted, they're volunteers, but that's, that's a tough job. San Luis Obispo has 215 artists. Uh, they charge the artists $210, and, and some of that goes to 
so that the artists will become members of their art association. Um, but they raise, they raise quite a bit of money, uh, but then they crank out 7,000 catalogs. Um, they pay a lot for graphic design. The numbers vary. Uh, I, I think we included uh, the one-page flyer, uh, double-sided. Uh, you know, that was our, that was our graphics uh, <laughs> uh, deal. We had a nice, nice logo and the city seal, but that was it. It, what, there was no catalog, I don't believe. Uh, it was not as uh, intense uh, uh, as far as the, the graphic design. There wasn't that much of a website. I, I'm, I'd ask, you know, do people expect a really cool website? If you want it to look cool, I, I think they do. Um, we are, again, recommending uh, uh, a consultant to help with all that and to manage the, the work. Most of our costs are going to go to the consultant if we do it this way, where we just print this one back, forward and back thing and get the so the beeline and all that stuff is provided by the city. There's no cost to us. Is that there's correct? a cost. There's a cost because there's drivers in the, the trucks, but they're not. That's not, a, not prohibitive. I, I don't. Not a think. big deal. Um, um, there's there's a matter of our staff time. Uh, if we don't have the staff to pull this together. Um, you may need a consultant. So the consultant is going to be the biggest chunk of the budget. If you, don't have, any, if you don't have that kind of artwork, probably, yeah. Well, yes. Um, in my opinion, we have to set a few ways to start the project. Either we're going to see and collect information to see how many artists we have, A. B, we need to set a budget. C, to see how long this project will last is a day or too long two days so therefore we need those information to come in first collect those information and based on those we can start to uh, uh, make a decision and also the starting point in my opinion should be the budget if we just double the five thousand dollar into ten thousand dollar in the last five years for example and then that's a starting point within the ten thousand dollar what we can accomplish from the B line or so on and so forth. Can so I make that a will be yes, let me finish. So this is something as a starting point. Or we can have the starting point, the hundred fifty artists, for example, and then build the budget. We need to have a starting point which which is the budget or the artist and then figure out how it's gonna work from there down. Um, and based on what we are talking right now, we still need some resource information to help us to come up to final decision. Um, I don't know how soon we can get those information, but we should get them. Uh, Commissioner Shurikian, just a little kind of uh, interjection there. Um, it is uh, $5,000 plus 500 hours of the staff time. Because when we are talking about the budget, since the staff is not going to be involved, so that, that needs to be a consultant or somebody else who is going to do that. So when we are calculating, we have to have that in mind besides the 5,000 to be able to uh, work on that. Um, and meanwhile, well, the artist, if we want to make it a kind of too big of a project to investigate and to see how many artists would like to participate, that might take too much time because we would really would like to keep it with in the work plan of 2013-2015, uh, and since it takes um, uh, six months kind of to get everything in place, so uh, we need to have that in mind as well. Uh, I'm sure when you let ask the artists to participate, uh, they are all willing to showcase their work. So to have it in more than one day, there are certain problems because half of these presentations were in the homes of the artists themselves or in their own uh, workshops. So to have it two days kind of would make it stretch, even though I can see that we could have the B lines for one day and individuals who want to drive themselves and to go to all the locations, that's a possibility. But it is, first of all, for the traffic, and second of all, to find parking spaces in the narrow streets where the artists live, somehow we notice that it becomes a problem. That's why the B-Line was a major thing, because everybody was dropped in the locations, and they knew exactly who comes when they come for the artists. So uh, one day makes it kind of more doable, and we could have an arrangement that some of the artists who 
or have the gallery, art galleries, they can have people visiting later on and, or revisit afterwards. But to have it in one day kind of more doable as for us staff and as for us um, the artists are. But that, that is my personal thing. And uh, more so, I do believe that 140, that's my personal opinion. Of course, we need to have much more evaluation on that to allocate $145,000 for the open studio tour. I think is a little bit too much, but we can work on that. And I'm sure after we put an RFP and people come and you know consultants come with their bids, then it would be easier to know which direction or how much money we could have. But we could allocate from a certain amount up to 145 and not more. 145. 145. No, no. 45. 40, sorry. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I allocated too many. Oh, sorry. 45,000. That's, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Uh, $45,000. So um, that's my personal opinion. What, what do you think, Commissioner Dean? Well, from, from past experience and, and working on it, the 500 hours was an estimation. Um, that was part of the $5,000. The total budget for the entire operation, I, I could have sworn it's somewhere around 5,800, I think was it, including the hours. Now, we were very, very fortunate with the hours because uh, our past staff, Ripsame, she put in a lot of her own personal time into the project. Um, so in looking forward, doing it with a consultant, or having somebody else run it, you know, realistically, it would be somewhere between ten and I would say ten and fifteen thousand, to be realistic. Um, within that scope, I I don't f foresee not doing it in two days. Also, um, we had a uh, ceremony and um, exhibit at Brand Library. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the cost is that much more for you know. The, they were showing the art there for, I think, a month or two, at least, uh, or so, somewhere in that ballpark. I, I remember it, so it was at least a couple of weeks. So in that same essence, there's no additional cost if we do an extra day. And what, um, from me visiting quite a few artists, uh, a lot of them would, were preferring two days if possible. And, and I see it as a full win-win for everyone involved. The artist, like I said, and we can actually publicize and see what the artists would want to open their studio for one day or two, and and it, it's just a little, uh, you know, an extra few letters on on a flyer to say you know open one day or two days and, and things like that. Um, I would render the guess at that time. We were looking at over 210 or 215 artists in Glendale that were signing up. I would render a guess we should be over 300, 400 artists now, and because I've seen qu quite a bit more work, more people coming in, um, and to I think that giving that opportunity, at least to have their name out, um, whether the, if if uh, you don't open up your homes. Well, uh, we even uh, offered them if they have a restaurant or uh, somewhere else that will showcase their work, we will even advertise for the restaurant in the sense by putting their their name in, into the flyers. You know, so it's a, even a win-win for businesses uh, along those same lines. So, you know, I, 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 I only see everything as a positive on, on this project. So, you know. Yeah, but we have to make sure also that uh, artists told us that the ones that the beeline dropped people had more visitors than the other ones because it was hard for people to find all the different streets and etc. As I said, for the main galleries it's easy, but the ones that the artists' homes were not that easy to locate and also to park. So if you want it for two days, I do agree it was a great thing that restaurants and hotels and etc. and areas or lobbies of the businesses could offer if they want to. It was up to the artists to also negotiate 
with the centers. So um, that, is, that is a great opportunity, but if we want to make it for two days, we need to have the beeline for two days as well. And that way we could nicely program, because the beeline was doing two shifts, so this way there would be four shifts if we want to have 300 artists, but nonetheless, to have their work exhibited at the uh, brand was a major, major kind of a showcase for the artists because that gave an introduction to the thing. One, one more thing before we go to, and there was a, another suggestion that I was reading the questions. Uh, do we want to be just art the way it used to be or do we want to have kind of like, uh, there was an artist, um, the McCardichan Gallery on Maryland was saying that why not we could block from one area to the other of Maryland and we could have art in the streets like vernissage. So, <clears throat> kind of a community can be dropped in that area and they could see the work of all the artists and we could have even little treats, he said, from the businesses in that area. That would involve that part of the um, city that we want kind of to have more life there. Yes, Mr. Oshaga, Commissioner Oshaga. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good idea and I actually like very much the idea of, of maybe um, having the artists participate the thing for me is if, um, when I go to on these studio tours, I want to see interesting art, you know? I don't want to, the selection of the artists I think is critical in terms of um, the level of art should be at, at some minimum level that is going to engage people in a, in a positive way. You don't want to go into a space where it's just, you know, I don't know, it's some kind of art that is, that is not engaging in any way at all. I think it, the critical thing is, to um, find those artists that are, um, I guess the, 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 the question comes to what is the purpose? Is it to expose any artist at all who's working in Glendale? Is that the purpose? Or the purpose is to present to our public, and we're giving them the beeline and things like this, to the public, those kinds of artists in Glendale who are doing a certain type of, not certain type, but art at a certain level um, with a certain, in a certain um, approach, right? Um, see what I'm saying? I think, I, I, you know, I, I, you I go would across see the whole range, then it's not going to be very interesting, for instance, to me, to, to go on that tour. Well, the, the difference, what I'm seeing is w w encompassed in Glendale artists already, we do have the high level and the beginners. So by opening it up, um, in the brand library normally is selected. And those are normally the artists that you're talking about, the the mm -hmm. one that will bring in and the, the ones that have something really unique to right. showcase. Mm -hmm. uh, the other ones, like I said, again, I, I see us giving them an opportunity um, when, when we show up at their studios, a lot of them have one, at least one item that's really unique. The other ones might be, you know, more simple, more thing. But you know, you know what? It's up to the artist. If they want to show, it, it will show up in their in their studio, and and that's why I, I want that open up that way because at least they'll have some type of exposure to start. And, and like I said, there the, I, I know some artists that until they get really expi inspired are coming out with okay artwork. But until we get, give them a little bit more, more exposure, it might help them blossom out. And that's what I'm, I'm seeing as, as us giving all the artists an opportunity to be able to at least be listed. And, and, and like I said, it, it'd be open to everybody in, that wants to come nationwide. <laughs> So, you know, I, I, I see it as an opportunity. And like I said, again, we will be showcasing the, the unique artwork also. So it, we're doing, we're, you know, I hate to use the word, but we're killing two birds with one stone. In that essence, we're, we're, we're able, to, we'll be able to do it all. And that's what I see. Like I said, the, for, for those who, who only want to see the, you know, the more unique ones, then they'll make sure they, they show up to the brand library where, you know, majority of the, the, you know, more unique are shown up. But for the other ones that when just look around, then they, you know, you, you'll have a whole, you know, I'm hoping at least over 250 
artists to look from that you can, you know, pick yourself in and to see. Some of the studios are small. Some of them are in their living rooms, backyards. But that's what, to me, gives character to the work. And, and you actually, to me, I, I actually get to see the artists in their, in their space uh, to see how they come out with the ideas. Because a lot of times you see artwork and you go, like, oh, well, how did they come out with that? It's so unique. But when you see it in their environment, I think it gives a, a little added, added feature. And, and that's why you know, I, I was really gung-ho on, on the project. Could I say something from what I gather here? Uh, if we are using the B lines, maybe we could be more selective of the artists because people have no choice. We drop them off at a certain location, so kind of we make the destination. So for that one, maybe we could choose, but for that we need to have a jury to decide who is at the level of the B line drop uh, or, or pedestrians getting there. But um, also if there is a little fee involved, that could help also budget-wise maybe, uh, not for the uh, uh, booklets or et cetera. Not, not. That to me is a major production and very costly. But uh, if there is a little fee for that, also those who are more serious about their artwork, maybe that could help. Uh, both ways, both for us to know that they're very committed to their work and also there would be a fee to cover some of the expenses maybe because we have a reception a day before at the brand like we did before and there's some cost to it. Yes. I have a question. So last time, whoever signed up got on the list essentially. Is that how it was? There was no uh, selection process whatsoever? Uh, we had Ripsime Marashan. Who, was, who used to be our uh, um, person in charge for that. Uh, she's an artist and she had a gallery herself. Yeah. So her choice also helped. Kind of, it, we did not decline, but kind of the, the people that were mapped and etc. she had a very good idea about uh, who needs to be there and whose work would not. So kind of, there was a selection without really somebody getting a jury of people are on this is right. okay. making. So we could even ask her to participate and help us out with. Um, but that's, that's another option. First, we need to see that do we want to have other things happening that day, like music and et cetera, as it was put in one of the questions in that area, or we just want to have it like before, only for art. Should we have other stuff or just, let's clarify one by one so it would be easier. Uh, I would just definitely go, go for just the art purpose. Okay, good. Uh, nothing a festival type, but art tour, uh, a day or two within those limits. Okay, so we are all on yeah. that. Good. Yeah, um, I think so. And then for the second thing is that um, we would like to see if, do we want to have this one new little thing twist to what we had before, which was uh, for Maryland to be kind of blocked from one area so that that area, because we really want to get more people in that area. Uh, so we need to cooperate also with the plans of the city and et cetera. Would it be okay if we would have that area? Because I know uh, that they are, uh, the gallery owner there would help us with that as well. Do we my, want to have that? Or my not? opinion, uh, that's a completely different project. So not to put it. Yes, okay. not, uh, let's not okay. uh, attach to this one because this is a tour uh, you can have in studios, uh, in your home, whatever. But that's another project and that will be also needed to help from the city, maybe park department, something because we need to block off the whole block. Let's keep that separate than this. That's another project. I hear you. Uh, what about the storefronts in that street that are, that are open? Can we use that for also some artists who cannot use their own homes if need be or they don't want to, you know, their privacy to be kind of kept solid? So could we do that if, if there is a question about that? Is that okay? Of course, I, I don't think that would be up to us at this point. And like I said, again, we'll, we'll, we'll evaluate to see how the gala program is going at that time. Okay. Because if we're not continuing with the gala, then you know that might not happen. I, I can add That's that, looks like. um, yeah. uh, Commissioner Derhovenis, in that the uh, the gala storefronts were up for sale, so we had to move out of there um, a 
month or so ago. So the two up on North Maryland, last I heard, were, were up for sale. Um, the one closer to the Central Library uh, is still going to be used by uh, city department. There may be some space available there, but I, I don't know you can, that you can count on any of those. Um, also, I might add, uh, Brand Library books the galleries, you know, a year in advance. So uh, <coughs> if there's any little sliver of time, it might be a couple of weeks in the spring. Uh, but there's, I doubt if there's a month, but they'd have to work that into their schedules. I don't think we need a month. Even a week would do. And then we could work that out. And based on the timeline, the gallery, because it's major if we have every artist or, or all the chosen artists work presented at the Brand Library, um, so uh, Brand Exhibit Hall. So we could, the timeline should go then with when a uh, brand has that one week slot to give us so for that thing. So that, that is for the timeline. As far as dates, you said two days would seem right. I think commissioners basically you all agree. Mm -hmm. Possibly, possibly two days would be desirable, but with the consultant we have to see how things work. Um, and um, we want only for art, no uh, catalogs just the flyer the way we had before. And we would have a consultant who would uh, kind of put it together for us. And uh, as far as the budget, so what, what do we talk about? The, you know, what's your take on it so that we would uh, ask for the council um, to, to approve? As I opened my statement, uh, doubling it within from 5,000 to 10 is something doable considering the inflation going on around the gas prices, whatever. But uh, if it goes another maybe 10% or 20% above the $10,000, I think that will be acceptable, but not more than 20%. Okay. So the limit. should it be like between 10 and 15,000? Would it be safe to say that? Because you know that we have to pay a consultant. I, Consultants yeah, I think it's that. acceptable with me. Yeah. Okay, so it is something between 10 and 15. Should we go a little bit more in case, you know, with uh, different uh, expenses coming up, we could always spend less, but because we need to have the council to approve, can we go with a little bit more, go from between 10 and 20, and then try to be frugal as much as possible? My opinion is, is if we stretch it out, then people will use that maximum. Uh, let's keep it within 15 max, I would say, then that will be a better uh, range. So uh, between uh, up to 15,000. 15, up to 15,000. 15, yes. So, so far we have up to 15,000, possibly two days, only art, uh, two days beeline, and uh, uh, no catalogs. Are we all on the same page? The flyer should be enough at this point because yes. still this is a Absolutely. process that we might expand for next year sometime, but this is only information right. and tour yet. Only. Should we charge anything, uh, any little sum or something for the artists to pay that they want to participate or not? I, I would put no fee at this point. Let's see how the program reruns because, like I said, we haven't done it for... 15 years, let's, uh, five years, I'm sorry. So I want, want, you know, we go from there and then we'll work on next year's budget. So okay. what do you think? Uh, no no charge. You know, no I, I, see, I see a lot of different, um, there's um, individual artists who have studios or homes and then there's a bunch of organizations or like Brand Art Studio and Express Art Center. You know, these are larger organizations. Maybe it makes sense if, if what they're doing is they're bringing in a bunch of artists to show on that day. Is that what they're doing? Most of them were, were if, artists within their studios. But not, not on this list. We I, had you know. different groups. So uh, some what? have galleries. Well, naturally, it's a promotion for the galleries. If it's for restaurants and hotels also, mm -hmm. businesses, yes. But individual artists in their homes, uh, yes, I can see that fee would be kind of very relevant. Yeah. But if it is for uh, businesses that they, whatever, then in that case, I do believe that there should be a kind of a negotiation between. But, uh, no, I'm not good with the money part, so. It uh, makes sense to perhaps have those, or, like if there's a restaurant, they can certainly pay $50 for that day, right, to have a bunch of people come in, or, or organizations or something, right? So it's possible we could 
uh, they can they could support the project that way, but not individual artists who have their studio over in their home. I mean. Well, One I was thinking if restaurants participate, because I like food, I was thinking that maybe if we could have uh, the, the, the last destination for the beeline to stop would be at a restaurant that they have the, the work of the artists exhibited, so then people naturally would stay there to have a cup of coffee and a cake or maybe you know a sandwich or dinner or lunch. So that could help the restaurant if we work on it, we have to have the consultant work on those details because if that is negotiated with the restaurants, we could have a lot of businesses involved in this event and even maybe they could sponsor this year or next year or if, if this, this program goes on. So yes, uh, In order to be more reasonable to the a project that is workable, I would keep as a uh, tour, uh, artist tour only with up to $15,000 budget. Based on this year experience, we can have a little bit more expanded uh, program next year. And we can learn from the other cities what, how they were trying to allocate some money from restaurants, hotel, whatever. So this is a base would be uh, to expand for the next year and following years. I do have some experience in Laguna Beach City that they have similar programs and they make, the city makes money out of it, not just yeah, you give can. it free, yeah, they make money out of it. So therefore this is something, it's a base for next year and the following years. Let's see what happens, but uh, for this year let's keep it free, let have people come in and touch the feeling again and go on from there and the next year, if we decide to do it, then we'll prepare six months ahead and we'll build on that. So I hear from you that we do not want any expenses at all. I we could maybe that. talk, not have any expenses, but businesses to see to say that you know they need to practice and experience how it works, and then in the future, if they want this program to go on, maybe they should <coughs> invest on that. That's a good yeah. idea. Are you happy with that, uh, Commissioner uh, Oshaga? Uh, yeah, since I guess this is sort of a kickstarter of the program, then the first year we can just try, okay. try it that way. So we have no expenses for the artists. We have possibly two days and two days of beeline. We have only art exhibits and uh, we will have the date sometime where um, Brand has an opening for a week to show the work of the artists. Oh, good. So Are we talking in, in the summer? This year, uh, it depends because if brand library, brand exhibit hall has an opening for a week to give for this event, let's say in summer or in that summer is too soon. That you mean for next year's summer? No, this year, 2015. We, I don't think for doing all the preps and mapping cannot. and etc. It cannot, based on the fact that even when we had our own staff and they put extra hours on their own, it took okay. six months. So we need to look for at least six months from the time council approved to okay. release that money for this budget, uh, for this program. And then uh, we need to also check with the uh, brand library to see more or less around which time we could have. Because the most important thing to me is that as an artist personally, uh, which is my second hat or third, I don't know, <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that it is great to have that opportunity to have your work to be exhibited at brand. So we would go the timeline based on the brand library's opening for one week at least, and then the rest goes on. So we are all clear on that. Have we got all our notes in line? So uh, this is what, so do we have a motion on uh, approving whatever we discussed, which is uh, two days possibly, two day beeline, one day reception. We have no money involved from the artists and we have only art. And naturally we would have a selection for the brand library because we have limited space for that. Uh, uh, Chair Derhovenessian, uh, I have a question, one more point, uh, maybe two. Is, do you have a theme? for the open studio tour? That's, that's one. Um, two, uh, your consultant might also be a curator. That's another way to handle that. Um, three, I, I'm sure Brand's not gonna be ready for anything like this until next spring, uh, which frankly falls uh, in with our, our timeline. If, if based on your input, uh, we can return with a draft, a scope of work, and a, and a, uh, a 
what they call a professional services agreement for you to review for recommendation to city council. Um, and then with, with all that to hire somebody, uh, we're still looking at launching this in, in the spring. spring, March, April, 2016. I think that is, that is uh, fair to say so because that is as it's much okay. time we need it. And, and it doesn't no conflict. It, it, well, it, 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 and like you said, if we can try to do it tomorrow. in the fast track a little bit, maybe December, uh, November, December. We well, we, we can play it out. Like yeah. I said, let's see how Commission, how things we, work out. We need to have the brand uh, available. available. Correct. And, and so it could be between because normally their exhibits are four or six months, right? Right now, they're about I, well six to eight weeks. Oh, six to eight weeks. I think so. Yeah. We'll find one that in between that. Yeah. when they're going to change well that then we, we need our staff to look and check with the brand staff to see exactly when the openings are and then uh, i think the timeline spring would be right because by the time we recommend it to the council and by the time they approve it by the time we get the uh consultant and all that that would that we would need that amount of time so uh the details could be worked out but as far as uh, the rest of the issues as far as the theme is there any special i think open studio tour by itself is a beautiful Beautiful theme, but it's if anybody has a special idea. Come see Glendale, or you know, yeah. art in Glendale. Um, you know, something like that. Something, something. We can have like identity and or the lack thereof. Such as identity, like identity art. of Glendale. Okay. Yeah. Glendale identity and Glendale remember, and identity, at, identity of the artist. Because remember, if, if you look at our business cards, we're you know we're. we're we're starting to be up there. So, so. Wait, what? There well, our, our business cards are one of the only ones that I've gotten in a long time that are very artistic. So, do we go with a theme and should that be, do we go with a theme besides Open Studio Tour? Uh, theme has to be very so. Well, wide we, open we can work on that. I think we can work on those details later. Yeah, I don't think it's time. Yeah. We can decide a theme right, right. now. We and your your consultant may have something. Yes, right. Right. We, right. we can direct oh. the consultant to come up with a theme in so, yeah. collaboration with us. I so we we'll leave that idea. for later yeah. on if we have a theme. But right now the, there was a little suggestion of identity, which was a nice kind of open kind of theme. But that's not something. Okay, to so, so I, I would make the motion. Okay, do I have? I do have one okay. comment to make before we make a motion, Mr. Uh, uh, Commissioner Lee. Um, if if G brand library is not available within time frame that we are working, again, this becomes the purpose of this program is to showcase our artists. Now, if we cannot put them together in one location in at brand library, let us use another uh, art studio that there are many yeah. mm -hmm. uh, that's another option i mean i love to have it in brand library but if it's we have to wait a year to reach there uh, let's find another place I, I i would recommend plan b would be maryland let's use we can utilize the street uh, that's different. Though. It's a little harder, that, but that is different. That is all artists bringing their work to Maryland. I would. Um, if it's doable, I mean, I'm bringing I up. No, 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 you're, no, no. Uh, you're, you're, you're making a lot of sense there. I do believe that again. By the time we recommend the council, by the time it is approved, by the time we get the consultant, by the time we put <laughs> six months, it is going to be somewhere around. We have to okay. be logical, right. so it would be somewhere around. Yes, if there is a time slot earlier, we could work on that. But let's more or less think about the. Thing that we'll have it in uh, coming spring. So th there was a motion uh, approved. Uh, do, I do I have a second? Yes, I make a second. Okay, a second. so let's have a roll call. Commissioners Lee? Yes. Oshagan? Yes. Chirikian? Yes. Chairperson Derhovanesian? Yes. Uh, so hence we would recommend this uh, to the council. Let's put it on their agenda. So we would go for uh, f up to fifteen thousand dollars for the cost. Two days event, uh, two days beeline. Artists home as many as possible, and possibly an exhibit at the brand library, the brand exhibit hall. So I would make the motion for that because that technically is part two, or because here it's written into the second part is the budget. Or we did we all do that all in one? I. I believe you know in your first motion you did say up to fifteen thousand. Yes. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I, I yes. 
Good job. Thank you. So well, that's taken care of. Good. So we are very happy about this. Good decision. Thank you. Uh, next item. Item 582, motion recommended recommending to City Council funding an open studio tour with all or part of the budget designated for the murals on city property program. So as it was mentioned, it was approved and could be recommended to the Council for $15,000, up to $15,000. A motion we should go? Okay. Do I have a motion on that? Yes, I'll make that motion. I'll second the motion. Thank you. So, that's taken care of. Commissioners. Have we missed something? Yeah. A second motion? First motion was to give us direction, to okay. give staff direction. The second one would, uh, would be to... Um, funding. The funding and, um, yes, all are part of the budget from, taken from the mural, the proposed mural budget. Okay. Oh, we have to clarify that specifically that that $15,000 is going to be moved out of the mural budget and would be used for the open studio. Correct, and you'd be recommending to City Council uh, the funding it with all or part of the budget that was designated for the murals on, on the city property program. Okay, so we would go with part of the uh, mural uh, budget that we had for the project, which is up to $15,000. So that's the recommendation to the council. Is it, uh, do I have a motion on that? Yes, I would make a motion. Second. The... Okay, thank you. Thank you for the correction. Commissioners Lee? Yes. Oshigan? Yes. Sharikian? Yes. Chairperson Derhovanessian? Yes. Next. Item six, commission staff comments. Is there any specific thing? Yes. Commissioner. I have a question about those flowers on Brand Boulevard. <laughs> um, who has done them? And Merchants Association. And why? And without telling us? <laughs> I can bring somebody in, uh, uh, Commissioner Oshigan, to talk about that. I believe the uh, Merchants Association has some strategy uh, for putting those flowers or whatever decorations on the on the uh, sidewalks on the corners out there. It's not strictly speaking a city um, uh, project, but I'm sure they'd come in and talk if you'd like. As it's to why public, they're doing it's public it. art, it right? Is, I mean, it's public. It it's on the streets, it is. and I'm I'm wondering how we don't know about it until it just shows up, and the city, the city has to allow them to do that. Is that right? Uh, How does that work? Could I, Can somebody clarify that for I, me? I cannot clarify, but I can put my two cents in. I do believe that any projects that has to do with the art fund, they come and present it to us, and we need to approve. The rest of the artwork in the city, I don't think they do depending on the commission's decision or choice. So as far as I understand, uh, Mr. Grant, Chair Derhanov and, and um, Commissioner uh, Oshigan, we can report, but staff will report back to you uh, to answer oh, your question details. how this came about, and it'll let you know certainly in advance next time if, um, you know, again, uh, uh, merchants or whether the city, you know, planted those flowers. I would appreciate that. And I mean, what, what I would like to see is a collaboration. If there are people like that who are willing to invest, in public art, in what, whichever shape or form, I think we should collaborate with them, so that you know we can have the kind of public art that we we really want, and or, or a consistent approach to public art, like the Glenda picnic. You put that Glenda picnic and those flowers together, they don't they do not they don't work together, right? So I like to open the dialogue with them, whoever is interested in doing public art in the city. I know that. Uh Cindy Cleary has reported to you that you know she has been working on with other departments to make sure that the city is coordinated in its efforts towards arts and culture. And, uh, though I don't have personal information to bring to you on this, uh, well, certainly staff will come back to you and, and report about that. Um, Thank you. I think in an ideal world, everything has to come to the commission, but I do believe that whatever we don't budget for, and it's not one of our projects, so I suppose city has that independence. I mean, community has that independence. But that's a good idea that 
we'll find out how things have you know worked because it is interesting that something all of a sudden flourished in our streets. That's a great idea. Any other comments? Any other uh, things we want to share? One. Yes. Um, I'm sure you all are aware there is an organization called Lark Musical uh, in Glendale, which they are a very productive and very well well organized. Um, I'm not involved with them directly daily basis, but I am aware that they are performing an opera, which they did last weekend, and it's coming up this weekend, Anush Opera, uh, which is a humongous work and very artistic. Uh, they're performing in uh, Pasadena Ambassador uh, Theater, if I'm not uh, Auditorium. Auditorium. Um, I would encourage uh, similar organizations in our community, which they have very high standard art uh, programs. And although they don't perform in our city, but they perform in neighboring city, encourage them and uh, be part of their program. This is not only, I don't see an opera every day. And when there is an opera, uh, it's very encouraging and uh, love to see that. That's all I want to make. Thanks for sharing that. Um. Uh, Commissioner Jehovanesian, uh, Mike Fortney uh, with the Housing Department gave a brief summary of the Glendale Arts Project in March to the Commission. He uh, would like to come back in July to present a more formal presentation about what's going on and, and how the Commission might be involved in the city. Yes, we would like to hear from them and community as well. So I'm very glad that they collaborate well and they are going to come and do their presentations so community would be more aware step by step as we get closer to the uh, f finishing of the project. That's great. Any other comments? Any Anything to share? Since there is none, uh, we do not have any written communication, do we? No. Okay, since there is none, we adjourn. Thank, Thank you. you.